The other thing that I love talking about is the different timescales at which things happen. You know, we we're talking about the human epigenome before. The human epigenome is basically able to find what genes should be expressed in response to environmental stimuli in the order of minutes and basically receive a stimulus, transfer all that data through this humongously long string of searching and then sort of find what genes to turn on and then create all that. All of that is happening in the time scale of minutes, basically, you know, three minutes to, an, to half an hour. That's the expression response. But our daily life doesn't happen on the order of three minutes to, an, to half an hour. It happens on the order of milliseconds. Like I throw a ball at you, you catch it right away. No gene expression changes there. You just don't have time to do that. So you basically have a layer of control built on a hardware that supports it, but that hardware itself lives in a different time scale than the controlling machine on top of that. Is that an accident, by the way? Is that like a feature? Is it, was it possible for life to have evolved where the, our, the daily life of the organism as it interacts with its environment was on a time scale similar to uh, the, the way our internals work? If you look at trees, they look kind of boring and stupid. You're like looking at a tree like stupid. Yeah. If you speed up the movie of a tree, from yeah. spring until October, you'll be like, oh my God, it's intelligent. And the reason for that is that at that time scale, the tree is basically saying, oh, I'm looking for a, a you know a thing to catch on to. Oh, I just caught onto that. I'm going to grow more here. I'm going to spawn yeah. there, et cetera. Like I can see the trees in my garden just growing and sort of, you know, looping around. And um, it's all a matter of time scale. And if you look at the human time scale, Remember, we were talking about neoteny the last time around, the whole fact that our young are pretty useless until, you know, maybe, you know, a few months of age, if not a few years of age, if not, I don't know, getting out of college. Um, and then we, we basically hold them, enabling their brain to continue being malleable and infusing it with knowledge and, you know, thoughts as, you know, that period of neoteny increases and expands. If you fast forward, I don't know, another million years. So humans have only been around, you know, different from apes for about that long. Jump another unit of that, another human chimp divergence. What could happen? From an evolutionary time scale, a lot. One of the things that's happening already is expansion of human lifespan. We have longer and longer periods before we mature and we have longer and longer periods because before we have babies. So intergenerational dif distance is, you know, grown from, I don't know, 16 years to 40 years. You're saying that's in the genetics, like- No, no, not necessarily. But, but it's, it's sort of an environmental tendency that's happening. But as we medically expand human lifespan, the generations, might actually be pushed instead of 40 years to 60 years, to 100 years. Like if we look at the long arc the, of the exactly, evolutionary history. Exactly. So as we start yeah. thinking about intergalactic travel now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that's that's a heck of a transition. Uh, yeah, so let's talk about intergalactic No, 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 travel. no. As, yeah. as we as a species start thinking about, I mean, I'm, I'm talking about these transitions that are happening, right? Oh, and that's, that's, so that's awesome. So continuing along these transitions, what does the future hold in the next million years? So the concept of us going to another planet and that taking three human lifetimes might be a joke if the human lifetime starts being 400 years or 800 years. So imagine- It's all time scale. It's all time scale, just different time scales. Yeah. You asked me offline whether I would like to live forever. I mean, my answer is absolutely. And there's many different types of forevers. One forever is, do I want to live today forever? Kind of like Groundhog Day. And the answer is absolutely. The stuff that I want to learn today will probably take a lifetime just to learn, you know, basically to clear my to-do list for the day. You mean like relive the day? Relive like, the day. And then and then pick up different things from the richness of the experience exactly. that are all in today. There's just so much happening in the world every single day. So much knowledge that has happened already that just to catch up on that will probably take me around forever. <laughs> on that on that point, I'm just, I would just love to see you in the Groundhog movie just <laughs> because you're so... 
naturally as a scientist, but just the way your mind works beautifully, just all the richness of the experiences that you would pick up from that. Uh, uh, it's a beautiful visual, but you say- try to live each day as if it was Groundhog. Groundhog. I, I'm, I'm basically every single day waking up and saying, all right, how would Bill Murray get, get out of that one? Well, you know what, <laughs> I, I, on, a, on a funny tangent, I, I got a chance to uh, go to a Neuralink demonstration yeah. event. Yeah, I'm yeah. not usually familiar I'm with right Neuralink. And uh, I talked to Elon for a while. Uh, and one of the funny things he said on this Groundhog Day thing is, you know, it's a beautiful dream to eventually be able to replay our memories. So we're kind of these recording machines. Our brain is kind of uh, maybe a noisy recording machine of memories. And it would be beautiful if we can s someday in the future, maybe far into the future, be able to, like in the Groundhog Day situation, replay that. And the funny comment that stuck with me is he said that maybe this, our conversation now, is a replay of a memory of a previous memory. That's and that stuck with me because it would probably be my replay. You know, mm -hmm. who the hell am I? I'm just some idiot guy. But like, Elon Musk is, you know, uh, probably because of SpaceX and so on, is probably going to be remembered as a special person, yeah. one of our special yeah. apes in, in history. So if I wanted to replay a memory, probably be that one, you know, talking to Elon yeah, yeah. for a while. Yeah, that's awesome. And that's an interesting uh, possibility from, a, if we think about time scales, if we think about the richness of the experience through time that we humans take, and be able to replay some aspects of that yeah. of that biology. That's su yeah. super interesting. But anyway, <laughs> sorry for sorry for the tangent. Let's. Yeah, you were talking about time scales and the expansion of the human lifetime and uh, the so, idea so, of intergalactic travel. <laughs> yeah. No, but but you're laughing about this. Okay? Yeah. No, no for sure that is. You're the future. talking about this. You're talking yeah. about exploring alien worlds yeah. and going to other planets. I mean. You know, when Sarah was here, she was talking about sort of going to other planets when we find this life. I mean, I'm I'm just very naturally, given the topics that we've approached, talking about the the time scale at which this will happen. So you and think eventually we will human or life life will expand out into the universe. The the point that I'm trying to make is that in intergalactic species, we'll probably find ways to engineer its biology in order to expand the way that we experience time, yeah. expand the, the, the time scales that we experience. And going back to this whole concept of, you know, would I like to live forever? Yes, I'd like to live to forever. Even if it was, even if I was stuck on the same day, I'd love to live forever because I would finally have time to do all these things that I wanna do. But if living forever actually comes with a perk of watching the whole world evolve forever, I mean, that's a huge perk. And I would, you know, just, it'll never get boring. Just an ever changing world. And then the, the mind, uh, you know, sort of uh, experiment that I want you to, to do is to also ask, what if I wanted to live forever, one day at a time, every year, or one day at a time, every decade? Mm -hmm. Would you choose that? Where you would wake up and the world would be 10 years later, every single day you wake up. It's the opposite of Groundhog Day where basically you always wake up and it's always 10 years later. So, so you're saying that's such a powerful, interesting concept that life is more interesting if you're, of all the life forms on earth, that you're the slowest one. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> like trees have like it right. Like trees <laughs> have it right, olive trees. Like, you know, they've been there since the Minoan civilization. Yeah.